From rather more embryonic than explosive beginnings back in 1984, Palliser Estate has evolved over the last few decades from a tiny patch of vines to what is now Martinborough's largest winery, boasting vineyards right across the district and one of the most popular cellar doors in the region. And steering Palliser from the start is this man. Why the cannon? I was in the vineyard one day and I had an old ship's engineer called Sam who had a mortar. Sam the ship's engineer? Yeah, who had a mortar. And I said, can you make me a cannon? He said, yes. It's an exact replica of a, a 1642 Spanish naval gun. Do you get it out very often? No, not often. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you bring along? Oh, uh, Sauvignon. Yep. So what is it about your Sauvignon Blanc that you love so much? Well, it's a slightly different style to Marlborough Sauvignon. How so? Uh, we leave it on lees for longer. Uh, most people are rushing to produce Sauvignon like in August. We'll typically release this in October. We got lucky, I guess, when we won the International Wine Challenge in um, uh, London. When was that? Uh, 97. So quite early on. People say it doesn't make any difference if you win that. I think the people who say that have never won it because it made a huge <laughs> difference. So what, did, what happened overnight? What changed? For, uh, for we, sold, we sold 3,000 cases of so. Mm. What do you smell in this wine? Uh, gooseberry. Definitely gooseberry. And there's like a, quite a sort of floral note there as well, like white flowers and lemongrass. In one word, what's on the palate? Fruit. Fruit. How simple. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's what New Zealand does well is fruit flavours, so I don't know why people want to go and disguise them. So we've just had a tractor pull up now. What's, what do you think it's got in it? It's got Sauvignon Blanc in it. Well, let's hope it's as good as this one. <laughs> <laughs> You've been kind of excited about getting the fruit in. Yeah, getting it in and um, finally having a break, so. <laughs> Have you had much sleep over the last few days? Not in the last week, no. No, but it's all worth it. It's, yeah. What are you hoping to, um, to deliver to Alan in the winery each season? Pretty much exactly what he's asking for, to be honest. What, which is what, perfection? Is he a hard yeah. taskmaster? Oh, no, to be honest, he's, he's pretty good. It's whatever the year brings. Every year, like last year, was horrible as most of the country knows. Um, but this year's been brilliant till now, so touch wood, it'll carry on for another week or two. When harvest is about to start, what are the things that, 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 that really stress you out? Prep. 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 So what's that? What, what, what is oh, prep for you? Machines, like, you know, having all the machines ready um, for the nets, for the harvesting crew. But then again, it doesn't matter how much you prep, things go wrong, um, the winemaker changes his directions <laughs> and all of a sudden you've got to get X amount of nets off in X amount of time. So what will you be doing when, when harvest finishes? Sleeping. Sleeping? Yeah. He does a catch up sleep and then we'll be back in to fix up what's been broken and what not with the wires and get everything prepped for pruning. Things are just as crazy in the winery. Once the wine has been taken from these pinot grapes, someone has to dig the skins out of the tank. And before lunch, there's the latest round in the Palliser Dig the Tank Out competition. And it's the French workers' turn to try out for the record. Five minutes! Woohoo! In the barrel hall, Alan and Pip have another treat for me. Uh, we've got the Pen Caro 2011 Pinot Noir. This is quite a, um, a really bright, really vibrant Pinot Noir, isn't it? Why do you think it's so popular? I think it's, you know, good wine, basically. <laughs> well, you would say that, and, yeah. Um, you know, also very good value for money, it has to be said as well. Yeah, we take a lot of care with the production of this wine. Today we've um, been hand-picking, and uh, this is, you know, example of some... some Brand new bunches. Yeah, beautiful Pinot. actually from our Pencaro, what we call our Pencaro vineyard. 
But ironically, a lot of this goes into our estate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing about our pen carry wine is we only make, you know, we only make a certain amount of estate now. It's only a very small portion, and so a lot of this fantastic fruit you can see here goes into our pen carry wine. Fantastic. And, and you get that really Martinborough, you know, that spiciness, um, that lovely bright red fruits, which I think is definitely in the slightly savoury character. That's definitely Martinborough. We crush this fruit, um, goes into a fermenter, and then it will wait for normally four or five days before the yeast, which are on the grapes or in the winery environment, start the fermentation off. And so, you know, it's all part of our terroir. So we're having right. yeast from our vineyards, from our local environment, fermenting our wine. So it's really unique. A couple of decades in the industry, and Pip, how long have you been making wine? I've been here for nearly nine years. Nine, nine years, so. <laughs> Is Alan a good teacher? Oh, he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's one of the best in the industry, he really is. He has a wealth of knowledge on everything, um, and from a technical standpoint, so it's been, it's been very good, it's been quite a privilege working for him. <laughs> e even at this point in harvest, I can still say that. Maybe ask me another couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and to me, one of the key things is the team. You know, we work long hours, and sometimes things go wrong, so you need to have a really good team around you that you can have some fun and have a laugh. And happy people make happy wine, hopefully. Absolutely, so, um, I like that. Yeah. And being part of the happy team at Palazza means a willingness to give everything a go. Hi, I'm Carla, and I look after the exports at Palazza, amongst other things. That's my primary role, but I do a bit of everything else as well. In the past, I've done the cleaning and the gardening and driven the forklift and packed the wine and labelled wine. Yeah, it's always been fun right from day one and I still love it after 22 years. My name's Jane Lenting and I work here as the seller sales manager at Palliser Estate Wines. I like meeting people and I like introducing them to the wines. Loma, would you like to try our top one? I love the fact that I do the sales side of things but I also do other aspects of work here. So I work in the winery, I help out Pip and Alan Definitely a dog's life here at Palazza, and man's best mate is the inspiration behind a very unique series of wines. This is our uh, Great Palomo, it's uh, the latest in our dog series of wine. It's a blend of uh, only six barrels of wine. And do those wines come from select sort of rows around different vineyards, or have you got one specific vineyard that it, these it come from? It depends on the year, um, okay. but this, this wine actually comes from two of our vineyards from our Furikaha and our East Base vineyard. Um, I was saying it's just six barrels and four of those are new oak. It's sort of raspberry and um, like wild strawberry. The rhubarb. Mm, don't know about rhubarb. The engineer already knew the answer he was. <laughs> It's not your humdrum everyday Pinot Noir, this one. Why start a dog series, Richard? Bear was my old Labrador. He was uh, 17 when he died, which is oh, quite that's old. That's a great innings. Uh, and then we did uh, Alan's dog, George. <laughs> and then Paloma is one of our uh, growers, Paul Collins's dog. So they each have a, a unique story and they're each quite, quite different. Are any of these dogs in Kevin Judd's place? Uh, no. Oh, they didn't make the cut? Well, they're dead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's no laughing yeah, matter, but I do understand. You can't have a live dog, it's got to be a <laughs> dead dog. <laughs> <laughs> so well. hopefully uh, we don't have the great whopper shortly. Oh, well, I think we should propose a toast to late great dogs. Yeah, to the Cheers. dogs. Good help. Cheers. Cheers. Well, that's really worked up an appetite. Luckily, Jo Crab has her cook school on site and she's whipped up a feast for us. Oh, no, no, this is good. No, it's perfect. Cheers, Palazza. Cheers. Here's to harvest. The beetroot's a great match for the Pinot Noir. It is a great match for the Pinot Noir. I was just going to say that, Ellen. Yeah, the method, 2008, and that goes really well with the salad and the seafood, actually. And we've got some Chardonnay, which is a great match with some of that seafood as well. So. I subscribe to the school that you eat and drink what you feel like. Um, so if you want to drink Pinot Noir with your bacon and eggs, do so. <laughs> oh, you know, I've been wanting to tell people that for years. Cheers! Cheers.